Everyone who does science fiction probably knows how to make a star field, but for those who are interested, here's the approach I like to use when I'm building these things. I always start with a ball, obviously, and I'll bring up the numeric options. And what I'll do is I'll make this fairly large. I won't make it too huge, but one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer should suffice. Let's zoom out to see that. Because I need all these vertices of stars, uh, I find globe is not the best type of thing to use. I use tessellation because it generates this nice even pattern or kind of a trellis of triangles. But there aren't enough, so I'll make the segments quite high to make quite a dense mesh. And I'll drop the ball tool. Okay, now I want to remove those polygons, so I'll use the kill option, which is K on the keyboard. That kills the polys, leaves the points behind. Problem, of course, is that the star field shouldn't be this evenly spaced, neat pattern of points. So I'll randomize those up under modify with the jitter tool. And because it's one kilometer, one meter would probably be such a small change that we hardly notice it. So we'll do another jitter with shift J. Okay, that's not enough. So I want to make radius, which is how far out to jitter them by. I think about 50 meters by 50 meters by 50 meters. That's much better. You can do this multiple times to really jitter them up. And there is my star field. Now, I'm going to go Q whoops, to name the polys. But notice the main problem here is these aren't polys. These are actually vertices, which means there's no way we could render these in layout, except for maybe hypervoxels. So I need to convert all these points into single point polygons so I can render them. So to do that, under create, polygons, points to polys, and voila. We now have a whole pile of single point polys that will render and lay out. Just need to texture these, so let's go Q again. We'll type in uh, stars, the loo, surface editor. What I'm going to do in here is I'm going to set the color to white. I'm going to set the luminosity to 100% so they're nice and bright. And I'm going to turn off diffuse completely because I don't really want the stars to be lit by a light source. They're going to be self-illuminating. Now to give it a bit of variation throughout the, the star field so they're not all just hundreds of little white dots, I'll click T next to color. And I'll say layer type, procedural. And I'll make that black so that it puts this kind of random fractal pattern over the surface tends to break up the stars, the, the, the brightness, the illumination of them, because it'll just kind of tint some slightly grey, some black. Now the pattern may be a little small, so I'm going to make that about 10 metres in all directions, just to give it a bit of uh, size, and click Use Texture. Just going to save that, so I'm going to call that uh, Star Field, and then I'm going to set it to Layout. I'm going to move my camera to the center, so I go camera, then under numeric, and set X, Y, and Z to zero. Do a quick test render, and there you have your basic star field. Now, if there's not enough stars in here, what I sometimes do is I'll take the star field object and I'll clone it. So Control C, create a clone, one, then Shift H for scale, and I'll click and I'll drag it out. To make it slightly larger, so like further away stars. Now, because they're lined up perfectly with the other star field, you can kind of uh, you can't tell there's more stars. So what I'll do is I'll rotate them as well, just kind of randomly rotate, so that they're not the same orientation. And there's a whole pile more stars. Now, if I want to make it even denser, I'll clone it one more time, size it up and rotate that. So it's completely different as well. And I think that's enough stars for now. So we'll save that scene, call it uh, star field action, because we'll put some action in there later. So I hope that was of interest. Uh, nice easy way of making a star field. And um, 